This video is going to start off a little bit dark and grainy for, for a reason that will become apparent shortly. It, you see, it's something I don't actually want to test next to my electronics workbench owing to the fact there's lots of delicate electronics in the vicinity. And the reason for that is this. No, it's not a vibrator. I mean, I, I'm certainly not going to stick this up my butt. Well, not without the right attachment which just so happens to be made of glass. Okay, well that seems a good idea, but can we, can we get an advancement? Can we make it more dangerous than just sticking glass up your anus? Yes! We can energize it at tens of thousands of volts of RF energy Directly referenced to the mains. Oh look, there's there's loads of light now. In fact, there's loads of light even when it's not anywhere near it. That's quite a scary actually. And if I turn this down, this is a modern unit. Um, I'll explain why this glows a dull purpley shortly. Because this is one of the electrodes that came with this unit. And it's much more stylish. Oh yeah, that's much better. It's neon. Now, this is the modern equivalent of a vintage piece of quack medical equipment and it's called a violet wand. Now, the violet wand was not the first of these type of devices. The first unit was a, a, a violet ray and we are talking the dawn of electricity. We're talking round about Tesla era when electricity was the latest thing and people believed it could cure anything because I mean oh look at all the energy look at all the healing energy that's coming out of this thing and the medical industry just jumped on it they, they produced these things called violet rays that basically had electrodes for absolutely everything and they generate high voltage at high frequency and the idea was that you applied it to parts of your body like um, for you could apply it to the Again, you could apply it to the beard, oh that's quite tingly actually, and you could apply it to your eyes, because that sounds like a really good idea, applying high voltage to your eyes, oh feel the healing energy, oh yeah, oh, 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 I'll probably be blind tomorrow, I'm not really sure about that. <laughs> um, but uh, these things came out with just electrodes of every shape and your style, they, they were for every part of the body and they claimed they could cure everything from baldness to basically infertility, cancer, gonorrhea, syphilis, piles, just everything. They just said, oh, <laughs> this is it. This is the miracle cure. And um, it's an intriguing device. It's slightly scary. But uh, the scariest bit of all is that some of them came with an extra facility, an extra accessory called a bit of metal and you shoved the metal rod down the end of it and then you held on to it and then you could apply treatment to other people or concentrate the treatment on your body and there is at least one documented fatality on the internet of someone actually holding one of these metal rods stuffed into one of these units because the way these circuits operate, it's what's called a, um, it's what's called a Odin coil, O-U-D-I-N coil, and it's a sort of like, it's got hints of Tesla to it, but unfortunately the design of the circuit is such that it's pretty much referenced to the mains. There are versions that came out that they, they added the earth wire in and the, the secondary uh, coil in this um, air core transformer at the end, it was referenced uh, was directly to Earth instead of just coupling onto the primary, which is controlled from the mains. But um, yeah, so this one came from China, and I'm about to take it to bits to see what's inside it because it's going to be nothing like the original units. So back to the world of light and better quality imagery. Um, here's the unit, and I have to say it's chunky. It's very stylish. It came with um, four electrodes. One is the comb electrode for doing your hair, energizing your hair. One is the general mushroom electrode, which is probably one of the most stereotypical electrode. It's used for applying over the skin. I guess this is a, probably a spot one for spot.
but and I haven't a clue what this one's for. Maybe it's for the eyes because it's sort of eye shaped. You see, the only reason they still sell these things is that there's a part of the quack medical industry that still exists. And it's called beauty therapy. And that's what these are aimed at. They're, they're called Darson Val units. Uh, probably after some beauty therapy equipment manufacturer. But they are fundamentally a, a violet ray. So um, let's uh, open this up. Now, it's obviously electronic because this is a potentiometer at the bottom. It's not the usual mechanical coupling. Um, I could actually show you right now. Just hold on. I'm just going to go and get an actual mechanical violet ray unit. This is how they used to be supplied in the bad old days, in lovely wooden boxes with lovely handles and brass catches, and inside the electrodes would be in the lid, and you'd have the big control knob, um, and then a dodgy two-pin plug, and the actual head of the unit itself, which would be... Uh, it would be connected, but all the, the, I was going to say all the electronics, but all the electrics would be in here. And the wand itself would be uh, a separate thing on a cable like this. And inside this unit, you'd generally find a coil with a vibrating contact at the end there with this adjustment screw for adjusting it. A capacitor, now I've added this capacitor, this is a new one, this is the original capacitor, it's sort of all sealed in pitch and it's pretty yucky and it was faulty, That the unit wasn't working when I got this one because of that. Put in a 220 nanofarad capacitor, solved that problem and turned it into a somewhat over-energised unit. It was quite a vicious and violent um, spark was coming off the end. And after that, the only thing that's actually in the circuit is this... Um, it looks like a rheostat, but it's actually a um, a variable inductor. I'm not going to call it an. I'm not going to call it a. Uh, now let's see. What's what's the name? I'm, I'm thinking. I've just suddenly forgotten the name of the. Ah, oh, why would I have forgotten the name of a variable transformer? Variac. You know, I was thinking variac and thinking, no, that sounds wrong. But um, it's not uh, It's not an actual variac as such, it's a variable choke. Um, and it just varies the power from uh, zero to, well, from off to up to full power. So that's the sort of the science behind the old original mechanical ones. All very stylish. And slightly deadly. This is a, I was going to say, this is a safer looking one. Um, I've seen other ones that have just mains wires going in, going straight onto this open metal work of just bare brass electrical connections and the knobs and, oh, back in the old days when electricity was new and, like, nobody really considered electrocution much. So I'll put that in there and I'll put this down again and I'll go back onto the modern electronic unit. So let's stuff this all in and then carefully hinge the lid round down so I don't want to damage the the last remaining electrode in that set. Ah, lovely. I can imagine the doctor turning up with that. So let's uh, see if I can break the seal on this. I don't know if it's just clipped in or if it's um, or if it's glued. I guess we'll just find out shortly. I'm not too fussed about uh, preserving the integrity of this because uh, I've got it to take to bits and to be honest, like most Chinese stuff, it's ridiculously cheap. This unit came from eBay uh, and it cost about £14, including shipping, from I think it was Del Hanway, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, this isn't going to come apart easily, is it? See if we can find something else that's going to use brute force in that.
pipe grips. These should uh, help texture it somewhat. Oh, there we go. Okay, it kind of bayonet caps off. Here's a circuit board. Here's a circuit board, but this is not going to come out. So the mains is switched through that, and then there's a couple of other con extra connections. I'm guessing this capacitor here is probably going to be 2.2 microfarad because I did um, a test on this unit. Let's see if I can do something of that as well. I did a test uh, from the in from the output here to the plug pins, and um, it came out round about. It was showing a capacitance value of about 2.2 microfarads. I'm not sure how much else was in the circuit that would have been affecting them. Mm, this is uh, this is maybe not going to come apart too easily. I did notice a screw down the middle, but I don't know if that's actually holding anything in other than the electrode arrangement. Oh, you know what? You know what? I just saw that move. I just saw that move. Here's the transformer. Oh, that's intriguing. I'm guessing this is just going to be almost like a triac dimmer. Oh, this is just, this is kind of pleasing actually. BT152. Sounds like a triac. Okay. Right, well, I'm just going to pause momentarily and reverse engineer this. Okay, well, that's it reverse engineered, and I have to say that was quite enjoyable. So, um, I basically just held this up to the light. It's a single sided circuit board, looked at the pad pads and tracks and just drew a silhouette of them and the components overlaid on top. Took some notes of the values. Uh, then I uh, did the first doodle from that, which initially didn't make a lot of sense because there's quite a lot happening. So once I'd worked out what's happening, I drew this doodle, which is, is much uh, clearer as to what's actually happening. So the mains comes in here, and it's designed for 220 volts, but I think it would still work at 100, 110, 120 volts, because um, it would just run at a, a lower level. And the first thing is this resistor here is across the mains, and that's purely a discharge resistor. It's for safety. It's so when you unplug it, you're not going to get a tingle off the pins from the capacitors. There are two diodes, two big capacitors. There's um, this resistor here in parallel with the potentiometer, uh, and the switch on this um, input here. There's one unusually large resistor, I have to say, a thyristor, a BT152 thyristor, which is a, it, basically it's like half a triac. It switches on a half wave only. And uh, the circuitry, that's really about it. And then this potted transformer, which has one very heavy primary winding, which is less than tenth of an ohm. And then it's got a secondary winding with a lot of fine turns, which has a resistance of about 1,274 ohms. And that's what uh, steps the voltage up to such a high voltage and output here. So, here's what happens. Initially, when the top uh, rail here I won't call them live or neutral. Um, it, technically speaking, it would be nice if this was neutral, but uh, for some odd reason this one it was live, but it doesn't really matter because it's a two-pin plug anyway. But if it was a three-pin plug, if it was polarised, I would choose this to be the neutral. But besides that, uh, what happens when this um, pole of the mains goes, po goes positive on the positive half cycle? This capacitor starts charging through this diode. And... No current, well, will really, not any significant current will flow through this coil. Uh, nothing that would have an effect because it's a very low impedance. So as the voltage in that rises, um, it's basically, it goes, it triggers this thyristor via this resistor network and this threshold detector, the DIAC. And at the lowest setting, this 100k potentiometer is 
basically at zero ohms and it's shunting this whole thing out. So the only resistor in circuit is the 20k and that's the lowest setting. So that means that basically speaking, early on in the sine wave, as soon as this voltage goes to round about, say, let's say 40 volts ish or 32 volts, whatever this diac is going to trigger at, the thyristor is going to be triggered. And when that happens, the charge in this capacitor is suddenly blasted through this coil. It's given a really sharp spike. And if the thyristor was just switching to ground here, then you'd have a huge current flow. It'd blow, the, it'd blow the thyristor up and blow that diode up if it did that. But there's another capacitor here, one microfarad, 400 volt, that the charge from here suddenly gets transferred through this thyristor and it starts charging this capacitor. Now, I'm guessing the thyristor latches to the rest of the sine wave, that, that half of the sine wave, but because at that point the bulk of the current will have passed through in a surge through this coil, the rest of the uh, charge going through there will be just this diode charging this capacitor through this thyristor, so it will just be a progressive charge and it won't have much effect. At the zero crossing point, that thyristor turns off. And then when that side of the rail goes negative to respect to this level, um, this capacitor, which was fully charged during that uh, positive cycle, then gets discharged via this diode. So that's all this diode does. Its full function in life is to discharge this capacitor. As you turn this uh, resistor up uh, in, in value, it means that progressively the voltage in this capacitor is going to get higher before that thyristor triggers, and it means you're going to get a lot more energy through. So as that uh, potentiometer is turned up in value, as it's increased in value, the output from this will gradually get progressively higher. This is just the primary of this coil. There's a very um, high number of turns in the secondary, and that's the output that's going to be the, the high voltage to the tube. I'm guessing that it may be, I can't actually tell which end it's connected because this has such a low impedance, but I'm guessing it would be connected to this end, but it might not be. It could either connect to that end or this end, but it's going to get its reference to ground somehow, and that's going to be what the high voltage is referenced to. But um, yeah, that's a simple circuit. Um, very simple. The diodes are 1N4007s. In fact, the, uh, everything's marked. The component values are all marked in this. And I've put 330k in brackets under this because although that's a 220k resistor they've used, as is that one here across the uh, potentiometer. Um, th in reality, uh, they've actually used the 220k instead of 330k, which it's marked 330k for that one, but they've used 220k. And also, this uh, one is marked on the circuit board as 100k, but um, yeah, they've used a 220k, so they've obviously been doing some fine tuning and tweaking of values. But other than that, the capacitor values are all correct. Uh, the, resist the other resistor values are right. Um, yeah, so it's just an interesting circuit. It's very interesting. Um, and that just basically means that on our 50 hertz uh, main supply, it's going to be firing 50 times a second. Now, I don't know if there's any sort of resonance in this uh, circuit here, uh, but um, it certainly seems to put out, you don't see it, it doesn't seem that coarse an output, though it is quite buzzy and crackly. I'm guessing the fact that the um, high voltage has been coupled through... Uh, the gas and the sort of dielectric of the glass that it's going to create a peppering of sparks for each of those pulses. But very, very simple, very simple indeed. Uh, very neat. I quite enjoyed that. It's a, it's a nice circuit. I'm going to put it back together now and, uh, and play with it a bit more, but not near electronic stuff because it really is. Um, it radiates so much of a high voltage gradient that it, it just would potentially damage components in its vicinity. But yes, uh, much simpler than I was expecting and actually quite neat, quite like that a lot.